Well, ho, 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 Chris. You finally did it. You pushed me over the edge. You're always mom's favorite. I'm Chris Krungle. And you're Chris Kringle. You get all the credit. I was, I'm good at stuff. Well, I, I'm going to go. I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you what I can do. You don't know me. You don't know me. I, I, I have ways into your computer. You don't even know about. I have back doors. I do what I want. I could get at your formula. I know all your deepest secrets I know about your mistress. And I'm going to send that picture to everybody. I'm going to send that picture to everybody. And teach you a lesson, Chris. This is the last time you mess with Crust Kringle. Crust Kringle. Uh, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Good luck getting those reindeer off the ground. <laughs> so we've just received our threat from Crust Krungle. Santa really needs us. But in order to do this investigation right, we're going to have to make an evidence file first. We're going to do that using NK's forensics imager. Here we have NK's forensics imager already set up. This is version 7.8. There are newer ones available, but this one will get the job done for our purposes. I'm going to launch into it now. Next, I see the different options here. I can add a local device, go to the home page, add an evidence file, add a raw image, or add a crossover preview. Typical options are local device meaning that if I want to add the hard drive of this machine that I'm running it on, an evidence file, an already created piece of evidence, or, like we're going to do, a VMDK, or a raw image file, something that may have been created with a different imaging tool. I'm going to go ahead and click Add Evidence File. We see Bad Santa E01 file. This is a previous evidence file that we've created. I want to go to our source evidence. We have a VMDK. VMDK is a hard disk format for a virtual machine. In this case, VMware ESXi. We're going to add this as an evidence file. Now that we added the evidence, I'm going to click into the name to view what's in this file. You can see it's parsing the data within this evidence file. MFT stands for master file table. This process takes approximately a minute or two, and it really depends on the size of the source. In a moment, we should see a file hierarchy pop up. Now that we have the file hierarchy, we can see what data we want to create an evidence image from. Again, we're creating an evidence image because this is key to any type of forensics investigation. We want to make sure that the source evidence isn't corrupted or modified since the time of the incident. If I click on the report tab here and expand out this entry, I have the different properties of this particular VMDK. If I scroll down, I can also see the different partitions contained with this VMDK. The first one is a basic data partition. The second one is an EFI partition. The third one is some type of recovery partition. And finally, this fourth one and the largest one is our actual data partition, meaning this is where the Windows operating system is and this is where all the user's files will be. This is going to be the partition we want to actually make the forensics image of. So I'm going to go ahead and select F. I'm going to make sure that all those items under F are checkmarked. And I want to make sure that none of these are checkmarked. 
because these don't pertain to our investigation about Chris Krungle. We could browse through this now just to kind of see the different types of data that might be in there to validate. Let's take a look at the user's file location. Chris Krungle. So again, since this is a investigation of misuse, we're going to create a forensics image of this entire partition, which does include Chris Krungle's files. Next thing I have to do is click Acquire, and then Acquire again. So I could keep this name Bad Santa. Evidence number is going to follow whatever standard your company might have set up. I'm just going to do 001. Same thing with case number, 001. The examiner name in this case will be my company. Compass IT Compliance. Under notes, you could put whatever you want here, but usually file standards. Bad Santa investigation. The output path is going to be exactly that. Where is it going to put this evidence file once it creates it? I'm going to point to two evidence files. Note the EX01 format. That's a new type format for NCASE. We're going to change that format because EX01 isn't supported by all different types of imagers and software mounting tools. We're going to switch over to legacy. We'll keep compression enabled. We're going to switch the verification hash to SHA-1. Even though SHA-1 has had proven collisions, it shouldn't be an issue as far as submitting evidence in a case. We're going to highlight the advanced tab. Notice the 64 block size. This is where it does its checking. 64 block size, so it does a pretty good forensically sound image using these parameters. I'm going to go back to the location just to verify my path and now my format change to a .e01. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. This process is going to take create a bitstream copy of this partition. So it could take some time. Based on what I'm seeing here, it's going to roughly take about 16 minutes. But if the hard, if the data was larger, or the hard drive was larger, or I should actually say the data, it could take hours. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We see it going into an acquiring mode. This is the only status bar you'll get. Once it's done, it'll go through a verification process. And then finally, your image will be ready. 